American media has a system. They are influenced by Israel ABAC, ABAC and influenced by Israeli leaders um, who are loyal to Israel, who are Americans and live in America, but their hearts and their, th their, their uh, way of thinking is with Israel. So they, they influence the media because of their you know, positions, because of their power, because of their media, because of their writings, daily, uh, daily writing. The Palestinian people don't have billions, don't have weapons. Their power and their strength lies in the truth. And that's why the Israeli occupation government murdered the Palestinian journalist Shireen Abu Akli, believing that killing the messenger would stop the message. But the Palestinian community in the United States and elsewhere, and the activists who support justice for Palestine, pledged to keep the Palestinian message across the world. To talk more about that, I have with me via Skype from New York, Mr. Maher Abdel Qader, member of the U.S. Palestine Council. Welcome to our program, Mr. Maher. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Uh, Mr. Maher, the Israeli occupation government murdered Shireen Abu Akli, the well-known Palestinian journalist, and many journalists before, to stop the Palestinian message. But what we saw yesterday in the world, including in New York, the demonstration organized by the Palestinian community there, and the activists who support justice for Palestine, shows that Israel is a big failure. Tell us about that rally and its message. Number one, uh, what Israel did is um, uh, a, a real uh, crime, assassinating a person um, such as um, uh, Shireen Abu Akli, who continuously went and documented Israel's attack and illegal um, 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 aggression against the Palestinian civilians. Israel doesn't like that. They don't like their efforts to be documented in a negative way. So they decided during their aggression at Jenin to assassinate uh, Shirin Abu Akli. And this assassination of a key person who's known worldwide and dedicated her um, life or 25 years of her life to show in its um, in, in her capacity as a journalist the crimes committed by Israel you know it, it, it resonates in America it resonates in the whole world and uh, her killing was um, a major event in the United States at the very beginning the media and um, the politician tried to cover to cover uh, this um, uh, heinous uh, crime by stating that, uh, repeating, sorry, repeating the Israeli um, story that she was killed as a result of crossfire between um, um, uh, Israeli forces and, um, you know, they, 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 they refer to the Palestinian as terrorist. Now, yes. this was a major responsibility on Palestinian activists, community leaders, and Palestinian organization. Immediately after the incident, the way the Palestinian people reacted in Palestine, it's in, in, in Palestine from you know the river to the sea, okay, the community here immediately reacted by start making phone calls, organizing um, um, t talk shows and um, going, you know, to, to talking to the media and also going to the street via demonstrations. Yesterday, there were two demonstrations, one in, in New Jersey and another one in New York, in mid Manhattan, that started in front of the New York Times to show uh, the American media that they are biased and they have double, double, double standards against Palestinians. And we ended it at the Israeli Council. Uh, tomorrow, there will be about four to five um, demonstrations in the U.S., um, uh, from Texas to New Jersey. And there will be the one in Detroit and a major one in Washington, D.C. So to answer your questions, yes, the Palestinian community uh, is active and becoming more and more active uh, to show the American 
the real story behind the killing of Shirin, Akl, uh, uh, Shirin Abu Akle and the Israeli daily aggression and daily killing of the Palestinians. So the American will be educated. Yes, and uh, Mr. Maher, the demonstration or the rally that was organized yesterday in New York, it was organized beside or in front of the offices of the New York Times. And we know that the way the New York Times newspaper reported on the killing of Shireen was unfair. So did your message get across to the reporters, to the editors, to the executives of the New York Times? I think, you know, we, we, we demonstrated in front of their buildings and, you know, they have employees back and forth. And we had loudspeakers and uh, we are confident, you know, that many of their employees uh, heard this. But you see, the American media has a system. They are influenced by Israel ABAC, ABAC and influenced by Israeli leaders um, who are loyal to Israel, who are Americans and live in America. But their hearts and their, th their, their uh, way of thinking is with Israel. So they, they influence the media because of their, you know, positions, because of their power, because of their media, because of their writings, daily, uh, daily writing. So, yes, our message got to the New York Times. And yes, it was covered by social media a lot. But, you know, still, this is just a small dent, um, you know, in, in, in what we do with regards to the American uh, media. American media has historically, all right, been... Uh, loyal to Israel, and always when there's an, anything happening in the Middle East, they just talk about it in one uh, sentence or two sentences, and immediately followed uh, by the Israeli talking points that Hamas did this, the rockets that being you know fired against uh, Israeli citizens, you know the killings of um, Israeli here, their injury, and they avoid talking and mentioning that Israeli soldiers did this or Israeli government did that like or settlers did this and that. So they cover um, uh, on Israel and they try to highlight the, the talking point of the Israeli government. So they don't tell the truth, in another word, to the people. So yes. did our message get to New York Times? Definitely it did. Is it going to make a difference? I don't think it's going to make a long, a big difference in uh, the immediate time, but they start, they start recognizing the effect of our movement in America. They start um, um, uh, rec recognizing that we have 600,000 Palestinians. They start in, uh, started to be vocal and we are you know, all over in the streets, social media, making phone calls, writing letters, you know, signing petition, et cetera, et cetera. Because of this sum of extensive work right now, they started recognizing it and they're starting spending more time and effort, all right, to, you know, fight it back and cover it. But, you know, as one um, um, uh, 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 poll state, uh, revealed a while ago, that 35% of Americans, 35% of America start understanding the Palestinian side of the story and start sympathizing with Palestinian. It doesn't mean that yeah, they are yes, with us yes, against, Mr. Maher. against Israel. Yes, uh, if we connect the American and the Western media coverage of the uh, Palestinian suffering under the Israeli occupation and compare that to how they cover the Russian-Ukraine crisis, you know, they are very much criticized by many activists, many institutions around the world because hypocrisy and bias is very apparent. Don't you think now in order to show the people that they are different and they try to be even handed in handling a crisis around the world, whether in Ukraine or Palestine, they would change their direction, their attitude and fair enough cover the suffering and the catastrophic conditions that the Palestinians are going through under the Israeli occupation? You see, they recognize, I don't think so, first of all. There's, yes. there's, there, there is no balance, you know, in um, uh, covering the Palestinian side versus Israel. 
and Ukraine um, um, war um, um, with Russia uh, is a good example. If you go to CNN, 80 to 90 percent of their news is about Ukraine. They visit families. They bring in, you know, wives with kids and they show killed people in the streets and they, 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 they show dramatic stories shows them a dramatic stories. So the, this media that covers 80%, when there is like a killing of Israeli people on Palestinian, they said, you know, there are clashes between the Israelis and the Palestinians. There mm-hmm. are um, uh, riots um, uh, in Jenin, for example, and the Israeli police wanted to suppress, suppress these riots, even though Israel is the invader. So to answer your question, this um, um, unbalance uh, of portraying Israel um, always as the victim and the Palestinian um, and everybody else in the Middle East as the aggressor. Okay. Yes. Uh, and this will not. Uh, this will not end. You know, soon. But I think our pers- persistent and continuous work will force them one day or another to change, and that's why they are afraid. That's why they are afraid. Yes, but if we talk about the way they covered the assassination of the Palestinian journalist Shireen Abu Akli by the Israeli occupation soldiers in Jenin refugee camp, the moment she was assassinated, the coverage was different from the moment her funeral entered into Jerusalem when the Israeli occupation police and forces attacked the coffin, the casket, and it was about the drop of the shoulders of the Paul bearers. Did you see, did you observe any difference between reporting at the moment of assassination and at the moment of holding the casket in Jerusalem? Yeah, you know, I think you bring um, an excellent point. Number one, when she was uh, assassinated, American media stated that she was killed as a result of a crossfire between Israeli police and terrorists. So they did not, they gave like, you know, coverage and protection for the state of Israel. Later on, the, sto- the, the story start, you know, changing little by little, little by little, by stating that, you know, there was like an error and mistake and it's Israel will investigate it. It's like, the, the, you know, the, 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 the entity that killed and cause the killing and the assassination, they want to investigate. Investigate what? And they came up and they say it's very, very hard to identify, you know, where that bullet came from. So, you know, they still, you know, trying to um, modify the story with regard to Israel to protect the image of the Israel. And a, a good example, a good example on, uh, you know, the progress of coverage to answer your question. Let's just the three um, uh, refer to three statements by three um, um, uh, entities in, in, in the United States. Mm-hmm. Number one is, I think the best one is Senator Elizabeth Warren. She came up with a very strong statement and she said, killing an attack by Israel forces is an attack in democracy. And democracy is the cornerstone of American uh, democracy. So you see, she had indicated and mentioned Israel, but she did not blame Israel. Yes. Okay. She did not strongly like, you know, when they talk about the Palestinian, you know, they say Palestinian terrorists, the Palestinian rioters, the ba- ba- Palestinian clashed and caused this and caused that. And they tried to hum- humanize, humanize the Israeli side by saying civilian got hurt, somebody injured, somebody was stab things like that now let's go to blinken who we applied so much pressure and things ultimately when he saw the um, um, the casket the israeli um, um, forces attack the mourner um, um, at the um, uh, uh, shirin abu akle funeral what did he say he said he was uh, 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 troubled troubled by the images and by the scenery that um, um, uh, that um, the Israeli police um, um, 
trying to push the Palestinian during the funerals. He did not blame Israel. He did not say she was killed. She was assassinated and implying that he was troubled. All right. Another congressman um, stated that everyone, everyone has the right to be buried with dignity. Mm -hmm. All right. And what the police did is unacceptable. So, but you see, they are minimizing it to a, an action of a police. But it's yes. not the action of just the police. This is an action, all right, by the rightist government of Israel that has a policy, okay, a policy to harass Palestinian, to kill Palestinian, to push Palestinian back. And as I, I recall, you know, um, a statement by Sami Abu Shahadi, who visited lately the United States of America, he said, Israel left 3% of the land in 1948 area. And if they do a project, water project, sewer project, anything, or military exercise, they, 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 they choose an area from the 3%. And the objective of it is to harass the Palestinian, you know, minimize their presence and push them away. So Israel is persistent in their uh, discriminatory uh, policies and uh, uh, laws you know, to humiliate, punish, penalize, kill, push the Palestinian away. And America is supporting Israel financially, with women, and within the media. So to answer your question, this um, uh, event, which started um, um, in Jenin by assassinating um, uh, Shirin Abu Akhle, to the minute that it, she was, uh, the funeral and she was buried, it, it got so much attention in the world and American media and American politicians couldn't avoid mentioning it or talking about it. But when they talk about it, they talk about it carefully and with caution not to blame Israel or criticize Israel. But this is going to be changed because social media is so powerful and lately has been knocking at Americans doors and say wake up smell the coffee there are Israel is victimizing the Palestinian and Palestinian have rights and they should have their liberty and freedom and that what worries America and worries Israel that there are strong voices in the West especially in the United States that starts talking about how horrible Israel and how horrible Israel treats the Palestinians. Yes, uh, Mr. Maher, and it is the duty of all the Palestinians who live in the diaspora in the West and all the justice-loving people to ensure that the message of the Palestinians get across and to confirm that Shireen Abu Akli was killed by the Israeli weapons that are funded by the money of the taxpayers of the United States. Maher Abdel Qadir, Palestinian American activist, member of the U.S. Palestine Council. It has been a great pleasure having you on our program. Thank you. Thank you very much. And I, I, I really thank you for this opportunity. And I'm, I'm telling you one thing, you know, our Palestinian community, especially in the United States or the rest of the world, in diaspora, they are really a strong, powerful, passionate people. And they start, you know, making um, a dent and a difference in Western uh, media and uh, Western um, 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 political um, uh, uh, establishments. And I believe that at one point or another, our story will be told the way it's supposed to be told. It's going to take a little bit of time. Our enemies, Israel and the supporters of Israel are very strong. But our people are so strong also because they have that determination and the will to stand behind the just cause of Palestine and Palestine will win ultimately. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Maher. And yeah. ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for watching. And from you, Samanazal, have a nice time.